Uh, he is still here, just not vid no video. Where, oh, okay. where, where am I? I'm behind. Oh, there you are. Behind Welcome here. back. Jim, can you move right here? I will move the move the camera. Just move. Can, because good? I need access to that. Okay. Is that good? Mm. Move a little more. Like that. All right. I see Faye. Faye, hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, everything is in place. Okay. Okay. Starting. Hello. Uh, hey, everybody. We have uh, five people live, and everybody else will see us in the recording. Hey, Dave. Hey, Faye. Hey, Justin. Hey, Benedetta. And hey, Safira. Hello. I will give you about ten minute update. Uh, summary of the things then Jim will channel so if you are impatient scroll 10 minutes forward uh, in the <laughs> video uh, most of the viewers are new to us so I'll have to give them an update where, who we are and then scroll 10 minutes forward and you will hear the most important part which is channeling uh, it will last for about our 15 minutes whatever we, we won't over tax Jim with the channeling so after the channel is over we'll answer questions from from the viewers. So uh, Jim started channeling about exactly a, a half a year ago, six months and a couple of weeks. Uh, before that I wrote a book uh, inviting the aliens to talk to me and I did the research on channeling. So I was researching channelings primarily by Bashar and by many other alternative channelers. Not only the mainstream but alternative. Uh, raw material is my favorite. So. So I did research, I knew about the bureaucracy up there in the skies and in spiritual realm. So first thing I said to them, take me up there for a visit. I'm applying, for my, I'm submitting my application. And I recommend every time, any time you speak to aliens, say I'm applying. They, they, it's kind of strengthens your position. All right, uh, next thing I developed the idea of the calling. Obviously they are not ready for the open contact yet. They are still developing the plans and the, the earth is not ready. So I said how about we start a contact up there, take us up there, make a colony of humans and we will explain everything to you and you will explain everything to us and then we will broadcast it back to earth ex primarily through YouTube and through television networks. So that was a very extensive plan. I wrote a book and that book is read by, by the aliens. So we are in the contact with Yael Grace, who are in charge of the open contact. They are authorized by other aliens to, to be the first to speak to us because they are close to us genetically. They are our descendants, our sons and daughters. They are hybrid between the greys and humans. They look more like greys, but they have a lot of human DNA, a big percent of human DNAs. And they're grateful for that. And they're close to us genetically. And they are eager. Eagerness is very important. They are motivated to speak to us. So, uh, and we are happy, we are lucky to be in contact with the leader of the project, which is Dizdu, Diz Yakabu Dizdu Da, his name, and shortly Dizdu. He is Yael Gray, about five or six, closer to six feet tall, as we are told, and uh, he is an organizer and a diplomat of the contact. And he develops the plans and we are advising him. So I had about 30, 40 sessions with Jim, one, each session about more than an hour, maybe two hours, so during this half a year, and many of them are published already, and now we are doing the sessions through the video, so that is, that is essential that we can publish them right away. Uh, so we are talking to Yale Grace, uh, two Pleiadians from Era, so they are Errans, like we are Terrans, they are Errans, which are very hum human-like, uh, just taller. Uh, we are talking to Blue Pleiadians, one of the Blue Pleiadians, and uh, we are talking to Lyrans. The alliance is between the Lyrans, Pleiadians, Yael Grace and Arcturians. And we had a little chance to speak to Arcturians, very short conversation. And Arcturians, by the way, are currently the leaders of the, of the thing. Also, we are talking to, and the association is called Gorkfitnir, or four nations which I mentioned, races. 
Uh, also, we spoke to an angel. Thanks to him, we always are happy to speak to angels. From a third level, third realm of the, of the God realm. And we spoke to an ancient god, a group spirit called El. And I guess these are the most important news which we carry. They are unfortunate news, but they are sort of motivated. It's not immediate danger. So El says that according to their plan, to God plans and the Creator's plans, and El is an instrument in that plan, they plan to create a major economic collapse in the year 2027. 13 years from now, 2027, they will advise everybody and influence the major economic collapse. And they say it's absolutely necessary for the survival of the species, of our species. Because otherwise our military industrial complex prevents our future evolution. And we need to make this evolutionary step, which is called ascension. And many of our contacts up there say ascension is a gradual evolution process which takes about 200 years for the Earth. So it's not immediate transfer, it's more like 200 years, several generations. But for that to proceed any further, they need to disbandle current things, current system, and help us rebuild the new ones with the help of extraterrestrials. So the plans for the contact the last one, the date we heard was end of next year, which is very uncertain. They're still having these plans in development. Um, and in this major economic collapse, so the, the first the, the contact, open contact will happen, and then about 10 years after that we'll have the collapse. So they say that in this major economic collapse we will have about half of the human population lost, and which is I assume our population will grow to maybe 8 billion at that time, so half of that will be 4 billion, a huge loss. And they still say they will, they will advise everybody, openly advise everybody to leave the cities and go to rural areas where the violence will be smaller or no violence. Move to safe locations and wait up to 5 months until the collapse kind of proceeds to destroy the current human economy. And then they will try to will advise us how to rebuild our economy on a new basis. Uh, they will not take charge, they will just advise us. That's another answer. So it's very unfortunate news, but it kind of delayed. So my take on that is we have still 13 years to prevent this huge loss and hopefully will reduce the loss from 50% to zero by preparing the humanity for for that transformation. It can be a peaceful transformation if we succeed. So that's my message for today. Yeah, one more thing I always repeat now. Our military industrial complex is not absolutely bad. They still, the military will still have an industry and finances. will still have life after the collapse. After we transform, the military will have at least three tasks. First, to keep the peace on Earth. We'll still remain humans on Earth. We'll still need police and we'll need military to keep peace. We, will, uh, we also need them to help with uh, a disaster assistance, basically saving people from disaster. We'll still have the transformation of Earth, all these quakes and tsunamis and things. will continue, so we'll need military to do that. They're qualified. And third, they will need to guard the Earth from outside, from invaders, which right now our alien friends are doing that. So they will happily offload that task to to the human military, you know, the good ones. So there, there is a good, still good perspective what we need to do. Obviously, for, on, on the on technological side, we need free energy and the ecology and all that stuff. So all of this is valid. Now, who do we invite today? We don't know who is coming, but we have about an, one hour. So we invite most important updates. We invite alien poetry. We really love extraterrestrial poetry. Uh, we invite any ancient gods, any high-level spirits will be happy to speak to them. Uh, our old friends are all invited. And people who from different races and cultures, all friendly races and cultures, are welcome to join us in a conversation and introduce themselves. We already spoke uh, to 
Andromedans, it was very enlightened. And there was a short conversation with reptilians, so benevolent reptilians are welcome. You know, the ones which wouldn't harm Jim and me and everybody. So this is, and later after we finish the channeling, we will ask, I will, uh, Jim and I will ask the questions already after channeling. So now I will invite whoever wants to come through Jim, we will invite that. Hello. Lakesh. Oh, yes. Nice to speak to you. How are you? Um, I will be good in a moment. Okay. Much going on. Let, let, tell me the news. Um, well, much going on in my planet. Okay. What is in the name of your planet? I do not tell that. <laughs> What's the star? I do not tell that. It's fine. Thank you. Um, it is in the Pleiadian system, though. You that have is seven stars there? Actually, more than that. All right. So, and you still keep a secret which star? Is it is your plan number three? It's it's just only a secret because my society prefers it that way. We're a neutral colony okay. of people, three planets, okay. as you know, and we prefer not to be bothered if that's um, a, a correct way to say it. How do errands call you? Uh, do they call you blues? The blues? They have a name for us. It's not the blues. You call us the blues. And, it's fine. Um, they call us uh, something else. Okay. But you would never be able to pronounce it, probably. Um, it would be in their language and not ours. It's fine. And we call ourselves other than the blues as well. So well, you speak in riddles. We spend a whole five minutes just saying nothing. <laughs> well, you ask me questions that I can't answer. Did you bring your new poem? Read us a new poem. A new poem. Well... If, if that's what you want to start with. Of course. Okay, well. And give us higher vibration, you know. Just going well, from. This. It's a poem from my meditations. Thank you. Because I was reading some human poetry, and human poetry can be ins inspiring. Of course. And your poem was very inspiring to me. Oh, which one? The latest one. Okay, the long one. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? Uh, I uh, let go. Or... Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I was doing a meditation, uh -huh. and I realized that some of the things that I experienced during my meditation, you might be able to relate to in a, a sense of poetry. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Because whenever I go into my meditations, I become one with everything. Okay. And so therefore, when I became one with everything, it was not quite the same this time. I thought maybe you might benefit from it. Thank you. If I can remember it. Okay. I did not bring it with me, but I think I can recite it. Okay. And it starts with oblivion. I am surrounded by nothing. I am still. I feel nothing. And there, above me, suns collide. And I feel nothing. But I see the world moving all about me and seemingly brushing against me but I am still. And then there is the waters. I am deep within them, 
and the creatures there move by me in silence. And I feel nothing, and I am still. I realize there are things, plants, fungus, growing on me, encapsulating me, but I feel nothing, and I am still. And then, I move into the sky, where there is nothing and everything, and comets brush by me, and alien particles, and I see nothing but what I've always seen, and I feel nothing, and I am still. And then the sky opens up, and I move toward it, and I am back in my room, and I feel nothing, and I am still. That is it. Thank you much. It's wonderful. Thank you. Did you understand it? Yes, I understood uh, some of that, some of the layers. Okay. I, I like that uh, repetitive feel nothing thing. And, you know, I can share my experience uh, where I think I'm getting asleep. And, you know, I'm where, when I'm dreaming, I feel that I'm about to get asleep. And finally, when I get asleep, I wake up. Ah. <laughs> Yes, when the awakening is the shock. <laughs> All right. So any, any news which are important for humanity? There is much coming to you in way of news. Okay. I am not permitted to give you all the news that, by, that is coming to you. But I can tell you that there are going to be much more news very shortly. All right. Um, the colonies continue to be of great help to Yigil, the Lyrans, Arcturians, the Adians, and the rest of the species that are working to help humanity. Mm -hmm. They are enlightened by the human telepaths. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Very good. And I can tell you that Nina is now in charge of all of the colonies. I understand. She has become adept at leading. I understand. Yes. What's She's... the number of humans in the colonies total right now? It has dropped a little to 56. All right. How many total humans visited the colonies, if you know? Probably. 92. Last time it was around 200. We had visited all the colonies. I was talking about colony one. All right. In all the colonies, yes. Okay. Um, any, any more humans from the volunteers from the website have been taken? No. Okay. All right. But they are being considered still. All right. Do you have any more news? Someone else is coming. Very good. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Always pleasure. Good evening. Good evening, Taka. Yes. Nice to have you here. Thank you. There is much going on in your weather. I know. 
These two will not be joining us. Okay. You understand? Yes. Do you have any questions? We have here? tons of questions. Um, do you want to read any poetry? Or I, I, I in a position and I'm to read poetry. Read, read me some questions. All right. First. Um, okay. Um, first question is mine. You say we need to reach spiritual vibration frequency over 5.1 to be teleported up to the colonies. Yes. But we know that in the past you, I mean mostly Yael, performed abductions where you regularly took up abductees with frequency way below 5. Yes. Why cannot you take us now uh, as you yes. did for the abductees? We wish to visit you very much and we have great passion to move the contact forward. If you have noted that in all the cases where there was abduction, there was mental damage, the vibration helps that the mental damage is much lower or non-existent. There has been emotional damage as well. These people, as you call them humans, were taken and traumatized. Mm -hmm. Even without the traumatization, the actual movement from your planet to any place other than the third dimension would be traumatic without previous knowledge and without proper preparation. Okay. Thank you. Next question is by Lulu. I know Lulu is a name of humans in ancient language, so it means Homo no. sapiens. No. Uh, this one is personal, so if you can't answer, it's all right. My daughter told me about being contacted by someone at night. My daughter is five years old, and I know what she has told me is true because it's just too detailed, uh, period. I would like to know if it's star family, if it is star family, if it's star family, because she says he comes from another planet. He is gray green, but he changed color. Three thirty-five, four centimeter high comes with someone else, which I think could be her guide and teaches her things. Yes, the children of your planet are being taught. Some of them have been taken to colonies. Others have been visited in the night, but. Do not be concerned. They will only teach them things that will help them with their future connection with aliens. So this this visitor is benevolent? Yes. Can you tell anything else? Is from which race is he? He is one of the five gray races. He is not a Zeta Gray. He is a mm -hmm. Grail. Say again that word? Grail. Grail is the name of the race? It's a gray race. Grail is the name of gray race. Yes, Grail. Wonderful. Uh, anything else which you should tell to her daughter or Lulu? She is our great helper and I love her joyful energy. She is benevolent and worthy of training possibly as a ambassador. The daughter of Lulu? The daughter. Oh, I see. Anything else? Not at this time. Okay, uh, there is a nice channel in which you found by Brad Johnson talking about Playel. Plowyel. 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 Can you comment on those? I am not familiar. What is Playel? Uh, Perhaps. descendants of Yael. Ah, uh, they are not called Pleil in our language. Okay. And I have not studied the descendants of Yael, but Lakesh has. Okay. But I can tell you this, they are well populated on your earth at this time, more than you might imagine. Really? Yes. They look like greys. They do not now. 
Oh, so there's a hybrids which are coming back to the Earth and uh, visiting us? Yes, there is an underground colony Okay. under a great desert. Which one? Negev. Okay. They're friendly, right? They are friendly, but very isolated and prefer to be left to themselves. What are they doing? They are creating technology that will help humanity become pilots. Okay. Sounds good. We need that. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I guess, David, do you want to start with your question, if you like to? Or message? Good. Okay. Dave. Hello. Dave Decker. Yeah. Um, any, any information that you think you know, for me at the time, I haven't thought of a specific question yet. Um, anything that may help me? There are many things happening with you, particularly. But they are very subtle. You may not know what is happening to you at this time, but you have improved 8% in the last two months. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Very good. That is all I can tell you now because too much information would hinder your process. 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 Okay. Thank you. Any, any, how about any help with the finances, financial situation that might help? We are not connected with your financial situations. Faye, do you have a, a question? You are mm -hmm. mute. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, can you read my question yes. on the website there? Eh? Oh, can you paste it? If you, can you read it or paste it? Oh, let's okay. move to Justin and then we'll come back to you. Justin, you're next. Uh, Alright, Justin. Oh, okay. Oh, Faye, paste it. Faye said, uh, let me introduce myself before I ask a question. Uh, first, basically, it's about using a pendulum to, to do energy work. Yes. From what I had learned from others, do you know the question? No. Uh, from what I know, learned from others, that using this teach, uh, technique uh, for setting information or doing healing works. But my understanding is that this technique, when using in the pendulum, instead of just asking question and getting the information, we can use it as push force as well. Because I never really feel dramatic energy senses or changes. Most probably, since I'm not a psychic or telepathic, so I don't uh, really able to tell what's happening. Uh, because, so basically, the question is, how, how do we use it for healing and other purposes, the pendulum? You are using it for dousing purposes at this time. Is that correct? Yes. A pendulum moves energy, so you can with intention use pendulums to move energies you can actually spin the chakras with a pendulum a pendulum will add an extra kind of energy not fourth dimensional but an extra universal energy to a chakra spin, an energy center. It will be intention oriented and you can add joy, happiness, calmness, strength of character. These will be used with the pendulum, yes, and that is a healing prospect for you. Do you is understand? It, is it more towards chakras? 
Right. Maybe are those like meridians? Yes, there's meridians, chakras, the seven energy centers. You can spin the energy centers with your pendulum. You can add balance to the meridians by putting your hands like this and doing a choku ray, which do you know what a choku ray is? In, I your, heard of it. in your language. I heard of it. It is an ancient symbol. If you do this over your circuitry in the hand, it will balance your system and balance your, put you back into balance in your energy centers. If, if you know someone who is a second degree Reiki individual, have them do the choku ray over your energy center circuits. It will restore your balance and bring you back into full connection with your energy circuits. Does that make sense to you? Because this is a reflexology area. Does that make sense to you? Is it because the hands the hands are touching as a circuit. Do you understand that? These part of the hands have much reflexology which meshes into the body, affects the body's circuitry and how they and are working. Do you understand? And the hands can use to manipulate the energy, right? Yes. And so this is a main circuitry for you. Have the Choku Ray done over this circuitry and you will be in balance and your energy flow will improve. Uh, Fee asks a related question. He, do, he has developed crystal program and it's based on philosophy of many things including quantum physics, Taoism, mathematics, spirituality, metaphysics and so on. He needs advice is it working well because sometimes he gets negative feedback so he needs a confirmation on how to develop that yes it's intention based you can get negative energy from crystals or positive energy from crystals you must be in a positive state working with the crystals so that the energy that it enhances is positive crystals have an amazing property of amplifying energy and if you give it positive energy that will be amplified if you give it negative energy that will be amplified if you're not thinking if you're not emotional at all many times nothing comes through you have it is intention based does that make sense to you you must put your mind in a positive state, a state of joy, happiness, spirituality, and intend for good actions to come from your use of the crystal. Then the crystal will enhance the energy. So it will become more effective if we are, I mean, using the emotional part? positive intention yes intention is what you set your desire to be on that person if you want healing bring the positive energy to the crystal and that will be amplified because um my way of doing this is like more to like uh mechanical mechanism is not um I do not, most of the time, I do not think of the intentions like... Mm -hmm. uh, but, the in, but your intention is clear in your mind. Subconsciously, you do have intention. You may not yes. set it out on your, your face or your, as you're doing it, but you know what your ten, intention is in your heart. Your subconscious will come through and amplify those good intentions. It will work even better if you set your intentions in a 
forceful way to the crystal. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Justin is next, and then Benedetta and Sephira. So Justin asks the question, uh, can you measure how much telepathy someone has with self or uh, by your, can you measure with our technology or with the technology? And if so, can you tell me my percentage of progress? Because Justin is working on his own telepathy. There are those of your species that have natural mental abilities, not always telepathic. However, I know what you are doing. This is what I would have you change. Are you listening carefully? The heart chakra is the beginning of telepathy. Also, the third eye and the heart are connected with telepathy. Sometimes, very rarely, it starts with the mind. But mostly, for humans, it starts with the heart. Your intentions toward one another. If you can pick up if someone is good or evil just by meeting them, this is the beginning of telepathy. Their intent coming to you. Does this make sense to you? Intent directed telepathy is the beginning. You, you can feel what their intention is. And they will not know that you feel it. Does this make sense to you? Because the heart chakra, that energy area, is the beginning of telepathy, as well as the third eye. It is a very interesting thing. Uh, Justin is watching you, but his sound is not working. So he is looking at you, but not hearing you. Oh. But he will hear the recording later. Right uh, now he, will, he is using his telepathy to hear you. Uh. <laughs> That's what he says. Okay. All right. Uh, you next. will know what you are doing and how to connect it to the heart. All right. Thank you. Uh, Benedetta, do you want to ask your question? All right. I hope you can hear me. Hello. We can so, hear you. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Good. I'm you kind of did this. My mom brought me into this right now a little bit. And I'm not so, you know, I don't know the whole system and everything. I put in an application as well. Thank you. Um, I just want to know, how much do you know about people without meeting them? Like, for example, how much do you know about me without meeting me, without seeing me? Just all these things. We know very little. If we watch your actions, we'll be able to know some. But the very existence of earthly telepaths that we have now have in Colony One, have helped us understand humanity so much better. Actually, we see you as capsules. Each one of you is so different. You do not have telepathy so that you grow and mature in different ways and your mental passages are different person to person. Whereas in telepathy, when I meet someone, we have a common bond. This has grown over hundreds of years. Do you understand that? <clears throat> when we look at a human, we see nothing but what their outward activities and actions would give us as clues to what kind of person you are. This is the reason why we need the interviews, why we need the human telepaths that we have. We utilize them to help us understand your emotions, your spirituality, and your physiology even, because you react very differently than we do. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. Yes, so we do not know you. We know perhaps some things, but only by your actions, your words, and your deeds. But that tells us very little in some cases. So, 
um, just in, just for the application that I made. So if, if somebody does an application, for example, in my case as well, um, how like can you how can you decide or can you tell me something about my application basically? I mean, where I am, where yes. I stand, or yes. you know, this kind this of way you make your decisions if you don't know so much. We are learning more every day. That is why we have not taken anyone else. We had to re evaluate our question system and our system of doing work with humans. It's much more complex than we once thought. So now we are re-evaluating our system of interviewing and calling you forth. This is not anything that you as a species has done to hinder us, but we are still learning about you. And when we read your application, we do get evidences of what we are looking for and therefore will initiate eventually an interview. I am hoping that perhaps you will be interviewed so that you understand what I am speaking about more clearly. Does that so answer your question? Can you tell me, yeah. So can you tell me if I'm getting interviewed or not? I am not part so, of the, I, I am not part of that committee that is deciding. There has been a committee put together that is deciding what new ways to communicate with Earth, and who is to be communicated with at this time. So can you tell me something about then my vibration? I can. What would you like to know? Okay. Um, low, level, high level, where at? High medium. What can I do? You, you can give thanks and be more grateful for everything. Negativity pulls vibrations down. I'm not saying that you are a negative person, but the human species has areas of negativity within their body that they must learn how to dispel. You must learn to be more thankful, more positive, and also, bring people up to your level and not go down to theirs. Does that make sense to you? It sounded very um, I, general, what you just said. Can you give me something more personal? I will try. Yes. There are times when you fall into your meditation, but it is ungratifying. Do you not understand where I'm talking about? What? No, I don't, I don't understand. You fall into a negative frame of mind. Does that make sense? About what? I'm not sure whatever you fall into a negative frame of mind about. But what you can do to get out of that is to give thanks, praise, and adoration to a higher spirit for all the things that you have. There are times in human existence when they breach these lower depths and they can be brought up. But with you, I sense that you are a fairly normal level individual. Your vibration is in the four point one to three area, which is moderately high. Do you need me to be more specific? Yes, please. 
just just as an example, um, I do actually every morning when I wake up or during the day, I do my walks. I walk outside and I um, at least for 50 minutes start to say it for what I'm grateful for actually, and I do my practices. And um, I'm actually what very grateful for? for different things, well, a lot of things. So um, I don't I don't have right now. I don't think I have that much of a problem with being grateful for what I have in that sense. So if you could go a bit a little bit more to detail, that would that would be more helpful. Yes. Very good. You are advanced mm -hmm. already. I am sorry. I cannot feel how advanced you are from here but it sounds to me that you have already taken steps to bring your vibration up in many areas and if you continue to do so this will help you what I need what you need to do is be with other people of the same thought process which I believe you probably are there is nothing more helpful than thanksgiving and praise. There is nothing more helpful also than someone that you can relate to on these levels. You are all knit together as light workers, and when you move up, you bring people up with you. Do you understand that? And when yeah. you go down, you, you cause a depression in the net. So, you have been working well. Thanks, Benedetta. I think your questions are extremely good. I really like your voice and I really like the way you speak and the way you ask and the way you think. It's really I, a pleasure to you, meet you. I would like to give you more information. Perhaps I can later. Thank you. Safira, if you, you want to uh, give your questions now, I can. Okay, I can. I'm speaking through my son's microphone. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, you will hear you well. Okay. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello to Kier. Hello to Kier. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent you this poem a few days ago. I read it. <laughs> did you get my Thank response? You. <laughs> yes, you did get the response, yes. I sent a response. Okay. I want... Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I would like to ask, am I Lyrian? First of all, that's one question. No. You are not. <laughs> okay. I am Can Lyrian. you tell me if I have a planetary descendant yes, or you ascendant? Do. I mean. Yes, you have a planetary ascendant. Yes, but you are not a Lyrian. You are a Pleiadian. Okay. You heard the answer? Oh, Pleiadian. Yes. You are a Pleiadian. Oh. Genetically. Okay. Genetically Genet hybrid. Okay. There are a few Lyrans um, left. <laughs> On Earth? Well, in some senses. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I missed that. Can I get that again? I said there are a few Lyrans left on Earth the way that you might think. The humans which have Lyran blood. Yes, there. I can explain that later. Okay. What is your question? Oh, thank you. Um, no, I did want to know my vibrational level, but also, I after I sent my application, I felt I was being observed. Yes. I had some interesting dreams. Yes. And then it went away. So. Is there something specific, physically or mentally, that prevents me from being no. able to visit someday? Or no, I... Is, was there no. something you found? Yeah. Let me explain. They are mm. in the process of mm. changing the interview process. They did send someone mm. to scan you and give you some insights but no one has been interviewed for at least three weeks at this time I would like to make that clear they are revamping the way they do 
interviews and the questions that they are using and the way they appear to humans. So fear not. If they okay. have done this, this is a positive sign for you. Okay. I, I was not expecting an interview, but I, I was worried that something was wrong with me and they went away again. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I do not know the reason for the visit, but I know that that is exactly what they would do at this time as a preemptory okay. visit. That helps if you're... One of the questions was, does she have spiritual connections to Lyons? Yes. You do have spiritual oh. connections. Yes, oh, very, was very it? much indeed. Um, yes. Was it a past life? It was a past life. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, my vibrational level? 4.3. 4.3. Which is high. Thank you. Better. Better, better than what I thought it was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in case I don't get another chance to ask, um, I would like to be useful as an ambassador in the future because I think I have the ability. Can you see? Is that possible? Me? They are listening. Your okay. answer will come <laughs> from someone other than myself. I cannot answer that. But someone okay. will. Thank you very much. Someone will, or I'll be back to speak to you. Okay, awesome. Thank I'll, you. Thank, thank you. you. I'll read another question, which I don't remember who question, uh, who asked, but I think it's a great question, a great suggestion. So. Someone said that you are teaching humans in the colonies telepathy through meditation. You do something else technologically, but also you do group meditations. Yeah. Can you do a group meditation with us to teach us the telepathy? That would be a long process. These processes, these group processes take much time. You must be in a state of meditation at the time when they do add the extraterrestrial part of this action. D does this make sense yet? I am trying to explain that there is a process. I understand that comes after deep meditation that is a technological addition and it opens certain areas of the brain that were once closed. But this process must be done several times before any results of any recordable nature is detected. Does that make sense to you? Yes, perfect sense, yes. Now, in addition to that, they have people from Earth that are more susceptible to this kind of meditation and technology and we seek them out because they are more easily opened to this and they are more susceptible to telepathy at an earlier stage of development. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes. If there is any part of that you did not understand, please let me know. Thank you. I will all the next question. I understand what you're saying. Uh, Nick James, our friend here, says the center of my hair, a forehead, forehead buzzes more and more often for the for, for the for the last year and a half. Might this have any, to do anything to do with uh, my vibrations raising or telepathy beginning to develop? Usually, this kind of vibration is 
a, an indicator that there is an alien species nearby. It is a Zeta Gray, which usually uses this kind of vibration to contact people on Earth. Mm -hmm. They are sometimes devious, but if you can pick that up, you are definitely very sensitive to alien communications. I would like to add that I would not want you to actually speak to them because they may try to mislead you in some ways. But do keep open and if they do contact you then you know that something has definitely happened but you don't have to accept the call. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Can you choose which alien alliance you associate with? It, it seems that they have chosen you but you cannot, do not have to choose them. And yes you can choose to be aware of different species. This is just an introduction. I would need some time with you to explain what further you should do to bypass their communication and get in contact with others. But keep your heart chakra open and your third eye is very in tune to the extraterrestrial. Be not afraid of that. So Zeta Grays are not that good. I thought they are benevolent. There are some that are very benevolent, but those that try to contact you this way usually have other intentions. Are they still doing abductions? They are not. Are they, do they want to take over the power in Earth? They want to take over certain things, but the power is only a very small part of that. Which things? What, what are they interested in then? They are interested in your core. Core of the Earth? Yes. What's so specific about the core? It's very powerful. As a tool, not as a source of material, right? Correct. So the live earth, the live core of the earth, like the heart. Yes. Well, how would they use it? I am not at liberty to but do, 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 divulge. Uh, next question is asked by Nick James, and also the same question is asked by Liney, our friend Liney. So other such beings is, oh, sorry, wrong question. What is the role of Bashar, uh, what does the role what role does Bashar play in the first contact as a contact specialist? Is it just to make people aware or does he have a bigger part in it? And Nick James asks, uh, are there any Sasani people in the colonies uh, and are considered to be highly ascendant compared to Yagiel? Uh, are they about the same or are they about the same? There are several questions there. There are no Sasani in any of the colonies. They are no longer called Sasani. Can you give us a name? We are not permitted to call them their new name until the end of their first quarter. Okay. I will call them Bashar's people. Correct. Okay. So what's the role of Bashar? The role of Bachar is to educate emotionally and mentally people to be aware of what is coming. He is also, a, in some ways, part of the first contact. He is the one sent before. He will calm the people down because they are used to him. He's been around many years. Excuse me. He is wise and will use his wisdom to teach mankind a higher vibration. 
Uh, Thanks. Thank, you. thank you for your visit. Um, I see that you're getting tired, or Jim getting tired. Is anybody else visiting? I do not know. But I will say bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your visit today. It's always a I, pleasure to be, have you visited. I am hoping that your questions were sufficiently answered. There thank is you. much more I could teach you and tell you, but I need to learn who you are to most accurately communicate with you. Jim. Yes. Hey, Jim. Hello. Thank you for your... Um, that was intense. <laughs> was it? It was a little more intense than usual, yeah. All right. Um, now, do you have any questions to me? I can answer them now. And then Jim will take his turn when he gets his breath. Dave, do you have any questions to me? Um. Nick, the we have one person coming, oh. answer and answer, answer the video. Hmm. There is no way to bring him to the... Let me see if I can... While well, somebody else is coming, let me, let me add Nick. Alright, oh, Dave, you're here. Okay. Um, just thinking about the sign up is that um, what information does the have asked for to try to go see an economy? I no, no, nothing new so far. Faye, do you have any? Hey, Nick, uh, you I came know. just to the end of channeling, but uh, we can answer your questions if you may. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Nice to meet you. Hello. Hey, Nick. Can you hear? Uh, Nick, we don't hear you. I think your microphone is not working. You can type, I guess. Nope, no sound. But to answer, what was David's question? I, do, I think he asked about the news from the colonies. I don't have any more news. Oh, is that not news about the sign up process oh. and, and how it how confidential is that like, when you put your information on there? Um, Can you repeat his question? That, 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 I mean, he um, wants to know how confidential it is to sign up for the alien colonies. It's not. It goes to my email, so I know. Uh, and obviously, if anybody of military industrial complex want to read any email ever sent, they can easily do that. No question. You know, I don't think they are yeah. very interested because we are. We don't know much. Whatever we know is already online. So it's not a big interest. We are their friends. But I think they're interested in what the aliens have to say. So they probably monitor what aliens say. But again, we publish everything. So they, the easiest way for them is just to listen to our YouTube videos. Our latest YouTube video was watched uh, over 100 times uh, in two days, which is a great score. Um, and uh, Enki, do you have any questions to me? You can unmute your microphone if you like. Justin, do you have any questions? Justin, you can't even hear. Benedetta, do you have any questions to me? <laughs> oh. oh, Nick, your questions have been answered. We'll publish your answer, the answer online. Thank you for your question. I guess, can you hear me, Nick? Can you nod your head if you can hear me? All right, so we, the question was answered. I actually asked it, and in brief, the answer was, this is the sign of Zeta Grace, and our friends don't recommend you to uh, to come close to Zeta Grace. I think they think that they are doing some not very good stuff. 
But the, the fact that you sense that a graze, they say it's, it's, it means that you're open and you can choose other benevolent extraterrestrials to can communicate with. But there will be more information online. I'm reading more questions so far. Two people are typing, but I cannot really see what they type. We'll publish the answers. Yeah, Zeta Grace, yes. I mean, the, the whole video is recorded. All right, hey, Sephira. But you can speak. Sephira, you can speak if you like. Uh, uh, I think we expect them to do clairvoyant, and, to be clairvoyant, and would like to know how much they can really know and see. I guess the answer there, uh, I guess Lakesh, I had experience that Lakesh can easily trace a person, even if I miss, say, say incorrectly their name, they would still trace a person through me, through my connection. They can find a person, diagnose the medical issues, and for one person, for other person, they would advise me on business relations with them. So, yeah, Lakesh, Lakesh was extraordinary in that. They, they, uh, he is very clairvoyant, I would say. La Lakesh is the only one that's like that, though. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, the other ones are not. They don't know humans like Lakesh does. Lakesh knows more about humans than the other uh, species right now that uh, that I can figure out. So. But um, no, they aren't clairvoyant. They really know very little about us. We have to, the telepaths are actually answering a lot of their questions. So they're getting together with the telepaths and learning more about who we are so that they can deal with us in a more amicable way. So that's what I'm learning. What else? So far, nothing else. Okay. Oh, is that all the questions? Uh, I have a list of questions, but uh, unfortunately all these questions are the ones which I wanted to ask them, not, no, not the ones which I want to answer here. Okay. I guess the only question which Sephir asked, uh, I probably shouldn't say that, but I already said it. So, the question was, do they have technology to, re to replace, uh, to put the teeth implants, just to give uh, people new teeth? Ask them to, and they said, possible, possible. Yeah. And I know they, they can treat cancer, they can replace, they replace it a knee to, some, to one, uh, one of their contactees. Not in the colonies, but they have the technology to do complete knee replacement, so it was completely broken to completely functional. They left few traces, though, of the, of the operation. There were uh, a set of dots on the knee, like along the knee on the side. So uh, they, they have amazing technologies. I know how they treat, the, the whole book is uh, about alien medicine by Adrian Dweer, an Israeli, uh, from, a Jew from Romania now, uh, who was in Israel. And he had a, uh, a practice, basically, a clinic where uh, Yael were doing the the medical treatments, and obviously they do it without entering our dimension, but they did transdimensionally. So they have the technology to take a person and virtually slice a person into slices, so they can, from their dimension, access any slice of the person and do the surgery in any slice without basically damaging and you know, opening the, the the body. So they open it virtually into slices, then they do whatever they need to do, and then. In our dimension, the person even doesn't, you know, doesn't feel much, except you know that somebody is working inside. So they even are not; uh, they don't even have to do anesthesia. They immobilize the person, but uh, but but that's you know uh, the person is still conscious basically while the surgery is being done on them. So that was very interesting, and a lot of that was was described, and in part the mechanism so for memory, which I tried to ask my friends here, but they sort of sort of didn't go in as much detail as Adrian Veer did. Let me see what they say. Okay. Any more questions to me and Jim? Um, do we have any vis more visitors? You would love to have any anyone else come in if, if you feel like they, they might come. Or you're already tired. Um, I don't 
sense anybody right now, but right. I can I can sh check. All right. That. I will turn it off. Just do a meditation. I am briefly, briefly here. Hello. I am Tepe. Oh, Tepe. Welcome. Thank you for for visiting us. I was missing you for the, so so my much time. My time of silence has ended. Okay. Welcome here. So Tepe is a Pleiadian, an Aaron. Are you an Aaron? Yes. Oh. Do you want to read poetry? Blessings? Do you want to tell about the news? I just would like to tell you that my time of silence is over and I had been contemplating visiting you, but I could not. Thank you. Uh, I do not have poetry as the others have poetry. My poetry is much more erratic. Um, the blessings. Can you give us Pleiadian blessings or something they teach children? I, t I am not prepared to do this right now, but I have just come to say that my time of silence is over and that you will be hearing from me in the near future. Well, you do, are you prepared to answer questions which we have? Uh, I, may be, I may be able to answer questions. Let me try. Uh, are there such beings as draconians and other humans here from some of which, with some of their genes? Yes, there are draconians. Are they physical in 3D, 4D? They're in thir third dimension, yes, but they are not welcome to visit at the moment. They are going through a civil war. Wow, with what? Within themselves? Within themselves there is much dissent. What, are their, what is their planet? Uh, star, what is their star? Sirius. So they're not, not an Alpha Draconis. They are fighting in Sirius within themselves. There is a new colony there. Mm -hmm. How do they look? I do not know. What size? I do not know what they look like. I only know of them. Are they genetically related to us? In the Fifth century. They were eating us or hybridizing with us? They were trying to hybridize, but it did not work. What country was that? North Africa. China has dra dragons on all, all over their culture. Are these real draconians or someone else? They are 
draconians, but not of the present day draconians. Okay. Are you aware of uh, the situation in the colonies? Not aware. All right. Uh, are you aware about 2027 crisis? Yes. Uh, do you have an advice? How we, what should what can we do to prevent the crisis? We are working with you with many means to help enlighten the world so that the crisis will be less. Mm -hmm. We still believe that it will be devastating at this time, but future plans are being made to develop a cure for the disaster. I am not able to stay. Okay, thank you very much for your visit. We appreciate your popping up. Thank you. It was the pen. Oh, was nice. I, yeah, I'm tired now. All right. <laughs> that was, he, he, was he distressed? Was he? He seemed distressed to me. All right. Um, I can turn on the sound. So, uh, NQ, you wanted to say something. NQ, you there? NQ. Oh, he's Hello. Not, he's not there. All right. Um, Nick. He just came in and disappeared. Oh, uh, Enki, can you speak? We can we turn on the sound. You can speak now. Unmute yourself. Just say something. Yeah, is it now? Hello, I can hear you. Can you send me? Yes. Okay. Because um, the aliens always said about how so yeah, and I feel in that every time we ask questions, if something's like. Uh, because we are thinking, we, we as human, we always speak to each other the way we are human, as humans and when we are trying to ask them and then the way they answer our questions is what I felt is kind of different. So is that that's the thing that they said that that's why the human is being a capsule for them? Something like that. That's my question. Do you want to answer it? Why are they being the humans being kept from oh, uh, capsule? The, the aliens capsule. say oh that we're like capsules. Right? Yes, because we're they're more like a community. They are uh, all connected, and they can talk each to each other just by looking at each other and know a lot of things about each other. Of course, there's they keep some of their uh, their selves hidden. Of course, for personal reasons but with us we can't do that we can't look at another person and know you know but, but if they're eventually we we have already developed that kind of habits right right yeah oh, yeah yeah but um okay. they're way much more intuitive with each other than we are so and because we can be misunderstood I can misunderstand him or you. Yeah, I can yeah. misunderstand, but they don't misunderstand each other when it comes to telepathy. When they face each other, they understand each other, whereas we do not sometimes. We can, but and also our thought processes are so different. We don't <laughs> think the way they do. We just don't do it. We don't think like them at all. So they have a much higher way of thinking about things and evaluating things way faster than we could ever do it. So that's, so that's the problem they're trying to understand us, right? Right, is that they they overthink it sometimes, I think. Okay. <laughs> don't, you th I, don't you think that's it? I sometimes think that. I don't know. I don't know. I wanted to say that they also call us cylinders, which is very strange for me. Why would we, you know, yeah. a human is not a cylinder, right? But they t t tell us, you know, call us cylinders. Uh, but basically what I know is that uh, all the aliens we are speaking to, or, or most of the, ma the majority of aliens we are speaking to are four dimensional. And the main change from third dimension, from 3D to 4D, is to becoming 
connected to each other. So 3D is individuals, 4D is uh, appearance of group consciousness. And this group consciousness can be loose with a lot of individuals having their own minds and Pleiadians are like that. Even uh, Lakesh, so blue Pleiadians and Aaron Pleiadians are like that. Lirans are obviously, you can see they, they are thinking for them as themselves. Uh, Yale Greys are like that. But Zeta Greys are more of a high mind. They are so much connected. They, they have less of personality and more of global. Uh, yeah, they're just global mind. More intellectual, less emotional, and that causes them to be a little bit more insensitive. And that's probably why they don't want us to really connect with Zeta Greys that much. Is because we'll get the feeling that they're don't really care about us. So is there a problem if being too telepathic? Say again? Too what? Is it too... Telepathic? Too much telepathic. Well, too... In, I think more too intellectual and less emotional because okay. they don't feel... <laughs> they don't have a consciousness about how we feel about some of the things they do or uh, say. <laughs> I would say yes, the, the, the Zeta Grays are experiencing the problem of being too telepathic. They're yes. so much telepathic that they become so uniform that there is less individuality, almost no individuality, more standardization, and that leads to being globally confused. Their race is globally confused. They are stuck in their evolution. Yes. They are uh, genetically de decaying and uh, they are not capable of, of creativity as much as other races. Other races maybe are not as connected, but they are more disconnected. They may have conflict, conflicts even inside the race, but they have creative solutions. And Zeta Grace lacks like some of that creativity. So they they found the solution for that. They create hybrids of themselves and Earth humans, and these hybrids create and place them on new planets like Yael, Sasani, uh, Ployel, as, as we discovered, and now we find Grail, so at least we know several more species of Grays which were infused with, uh, with other genes of other races, more, more, more like us, and they do much better. They progress much faster and they already make uh, spiritual progress faster, so you know, Sasani evolved to the fifth density, and the greys are somewhere uh, stuck in their evolution. So yes, yes. there is a problem mm -hmm. with telepathy. Talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. coming back to the previous question, uh, we, all, we also spoke to and to and about a couple more races. So there is friendly Andromedans in our solar system. They are on a huge ship, which they say are 26 miles long. And they are 3D, third dimensional. And apparently when I spoke to them and when I read their poetry, they are as full of, of uh, negativity, not, not they're, they're benevolent, but they're full of fear and other negative emotions as we are. So they're more 3D, they're, they're, uh, uh, more, they have lower vibration than than four four D people. They are talking to to you know Pleiadians, Yael and Sasani and others, and Lirans. But but they came here to help and they're friendly and they I think they I wonder what they're doing. But they are part of that project of helping Earth. Also, I know about uh, about a thousand um, reptilians, which are apparently like disconnected and they have, they're militarized. They're more like how do you call those? I don't know, uh, from Star Trek, the, guy, the bad guys from Star Trek. <laughs> and, uh, and they are attacking the Earth well, from, like, with uh, sim simple, short, small attacks, trying just to mess things up. In the past, they were connected to our government, secret governments, and providing them technology and trying to take over the Earth through the secret governments. But as far as I know, it was stopped around two years ago, and reptilians were expelled from Earth. So they are not here anymore, and the Earth is being guarded from their attacks. So, but they are 3D, and their technologies are very primitive compared to what our powerful friends can do, which are Yael, Gurkhvitnir people, Pleiadians, Erans, and and Lyrans, and Arcturians. 
they have way higher technologies and they seem to be able to take care of that. So what I know is about evolution of all other races. They are, you know, every race goes from 3D to 4D then to 5D. It's, it's a very standard way to evolve it. Obviously some of them are stuck. Some of them don't go to 4D or some of them don't go to 5D, but, but I mean that's a way to evolve. And uh, our friends are studying all these races which already made it progress, already made it, you know, in the past made it uh, transition from 3D to 4D. And it always involves development of telepathy. So that's why they're so concerned about development of telepathy. They, you know, we are behind, we can't develop the telepathy. And part of that is physiological, the human genetics is not perfect to, to develop telepathy. Other races were much easier becoming telepathic than we are. And part of that is mind control thing, poisoning. One of the reasons we are not developing telepathy and psychic abilities is we are poisoned with our food and with our water and with our air. And as we are told, I, I, I'm not seconding that, but you know, I'm listening and everybody says fluoride is bad for your pineal gland. So, so that could be one of the options. But obviously, poisoning not only with chemicals, it's poisoning with information. Television is the main reason we are not telepathic. Television is, and advertising is the main reason we are not telepathic. Mm. And education, the way we educate the children is split in their minds, you know, the child is born destined to have much more loved, loving childhood. And what we do, we put the children in school and kindergarten, and then we give them some love, but then we give them some negativity and make them scared and make them uh, be afraid and make them listen to authority. And that splits their minds so they are not in peace with themselves and that prevents them to be in peace and in union with others. So, so healing that trauma of childhood upbringing is the key for us. When, so I proposed the colonies, they created the colonies, they have you know, almost a hundred people in the colonies. The main work they do, they develop telepathy in those humans. They pick the humans which are volunteering and which have talent for telepathy. And, uh, so far, they develop telepathy in eight humans of those, I think one or two are children actually. And uh, some of them are very telepathic and they can speak to aliens in telepathic language. So that was the greatest accomplishment for the aliens. And at that point, which was around July this year, they realized that our genetics is not as flawed as they thought. We can become telepathic. We can make that uh, evolutionary jump. So it might take generations, but at least some humans became telepaths and some of them became very strong telepaths close to Yale and their telepathy. So we are genetically not as flawed as they thought or as we thought. We have that talent and uh, there were a few other examples where people became telepaths. So, so we are not that hopeless. Next thing to, to, to mention is that we are so diversified, we are so... Even, you know, between individual whole humans, we are so different. Between the human cultures, we are so different. All other races that they studied who made the ascension was wanted as, as diversified as we are. A part of that is we are kind of a very unique experiment. The Earth is a very unique experiment. This experiment is run by our higher selves, by our souls. And... Uh, Bashar explains a lot about that. He says that we decided as soul group to create an extreme separation of physical 3D mind from higher self. In other races, they are always more, if not telepathic, they're more psychic and more spiritually connected to their higher self and to God. So our shamans, our spiritual people, psychics, you know, uh, people we call crazy who can hear voices, who can speak to angels. These are normal for other races. And we have a lot of humans who possibly also could speak to angels and spirits and others. But through the culture, we block that. The children say, oh, somebody, you know, 
children have that capacity, but they, they hear voices, they have their fairies, they have that. And there is a lot of things we do to our children to make them believe that these are not real. You know, there is a whole process of harming the children psychically and blocking their psychic abilities. It comes to energy blocks on uh, chakras and energy blocks on on the mind and third eye. So there is a layers and layers and layers of brokerages. Uh, you know, high education is, is part of that. Uh, education when you go to, to the job is again part of that. You become a standardized robot as opposed to a psychic person. So other planets, other races who did that, they did it much easier. For us it's, it's harder, but we get help. Because we are so different, we, we are being observed and actually uh, we are being predicted by gods and uh, higher consciousnesses that will make it and at the end we will become even uh, in many ways more advanced than, than others. <clears throat> Uh, I'm reading the books by Robert Shapiro, again channeled books, where he says that our destiny is to become creators, as a creator. We will create other, other worlds and other races. And because we went through that darkness, we have lots, exp lots of experiences which others might not have experienced in that degree. Do you want to add anything? No. I just hope... Have a question. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, just a question from Benedito. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you typed it? No, at the chat. At the oh, chat Benedetta. Room. Not me, not me, not me. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Benedetta, can you turn on your mic and read your question? All right, so I just want to ask Jim, right? Yes. Yes. Um, it seems that you learned to channel. Yes. and um, receive those, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, so you, so I'm, I'm sure there was a way that you learned to channel. And if there was a way, um, do you know how you could um, teach somebody else to do it themselves or they could actually directly talk to them? Well, I this I know. For many years, they've been trying to get a hold of me, but I wasn't aware of it. Things would happen, thoughts would occur to me. I channeled music, I, and but never any people. But I knew that there was something going on because even my friends told me that I was psychic or they thought that I had extra sensory perceptions because when I would write a song for them, it would predict their futures. And it would predict, like years later, He's still telling me the songs that you wrote are telling me my future and have come true all through my life. So when I started doing Reiki, energy healing for others, it opened up a whole other part of me that I never knew existed. And when I, when I Reiki'd Max, I think Max realized that there was something there. I was told by others, many people say to me that uh, when they Reiki me, when I am in a room with Reiki and even without Reiki, they, they see extraterrestrials near me. Yes. Pleiadians and, and Syrians were working with me. So when Jim said that they, he senses somebody, I just said, oh, these are my aliens, alien helpers. And they helped me doing the healing Reiki work. And then weeks later, he said, do you mind if I ask him a question? And I'm going, oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> you know wasn't really expecting much to happen from that but they started speaking through me and it was uh, Dee's do first uh -huh. and he started talking to Max and I had no idea what he was talking about so in that way I knew that I was being prepared a long time ago but I didn't know for what so does that answer your question a little bit? Uh, then yeah. The part of the question was, uh, how do you learn channeling? But I didn't really learn it. It just sort of came on me. It was something, I didn't even know what channeling was. So I didn't really learn it. It just was something that happened. So. I know where you can go to learn it. What? 
I know I can recommend someone to teach you. Yeah. At this point, I, I just do it, so. I think it was very important that, uh, and Bashar says the same thing. If you want to channel, you want to have someone by you who helps you to be protected. Because when, you, you, when you're in a trance state, you need someone with the healing abilities and basically who is receiving information. So Jim is just a channel, so right. I'm the one here asking questions and communicating with the aliens, right? He's doing the control part, really. He's controlling who, pretty much who comes because... I'm listening. He's listening. Yeah. And I'm recording, and, and that is important. Also, they wanted to talk to me, you know, they, they spoke to me through others before, before Jim, but, you know, when Jim came, came up, it was a, a great uh, opportunity. I wanted to, to, to be in direct communication with them so I can speak to them, and somehow they say my mind is too messy, I have too many things happening at once in my mind, they cannot get through. We tried many times, especially with Lakesh, we tried telepathic connection and he was sending things, it was complete silence, I would, wouldn't be able to receive or send anything, he wouldn't, wouldn't be able to read what I get. But it doesn't mean that you cannot. But you know, the main thing which Bashar says, you know, if you want to channel, you want to have an audience, try to channel to someone else. I have been once to a channeling class, and it's more like psychic channeling class, but basically uh, people in the class were divided in pairs, and we were given messages to each other. And I think it worked pretty well. What I received was obviously not from my imagination, it was coming through. My main way of channeling is to get images, I kind of see cartoons, like like uh, spiritual cartoons of uh, developing animations of uh, of different images which evolve one to each other. Sometimes it kind of gets stuck. So that image doesn't evolve. So I throw something intentionally there, say, and here is a cube, or here is a chess figure, or here is some water, or I blow on you, and it continues to transform, and I get a series of transformations that often don't make sense to me, but when I focus on one person, it is one series of transformations, and I make notes on notes, mm -hmm. and when I talk to another person, I get another series of transformations, and when they get the message, they say, aha! And, for example, I know, that was like a strange image I got, you know, Jesus Christ on the cross, and for me it means nothing because I'm more focused on Judaism than Jesus Christ. I respect Jesus Christ, but it wasn't important for me at that moment. And that person happened to be a preacher, and Christ for him at that moment was the main focus. And because of that transformation, and continuous transformation was just part of the images, it was full of the meaning for him, not for me. And, and so on, so on. Like sometimes it's complete darkness, and then I discover the person is in depression, and things of that sort. So my <coughs> messages are typically... typically... Uh, animated cartoons and uh, I close my eyes and I just help this cartoon to develop. I put my intention to help it to develop, but I also focus on the person. That's yeah. one of the tricks. Another trick, I write poetry. You know, poetry is natural for me, so I write poetry and I, I know part of that is from my physical mind. I know I intentionally put things there. It's my choice. I do the choice thing, uh, free will thing, and part of that comes Certainly not from me. So it's kind of playing tennis volleyball where you throw a ball and God throws the ball and then you throw the kick the ball and God kicks the ball. So the right. second part is channeling. I know it's channeling. Mm -hmm. but I, I wanted to add to what I said is since I've been channeling, I do notice a different in the way that I difference in a way that I think. Because I think more abstractly sometimes and I'm and they talk to me sometimes when I'm trying to sleep. So, and I get dreams and thoughts. And some of it um, affects how I think about other things in the world now, which is um, makes me feel like a little bit more alien because I don't look at things the same way. And it's, it's not really changed me. I still have all the same friends and nobody's shunned me because I started channeling or anything like that, but, you know, they, they do say, 
they do see a, a slight change in the way I think and perceive things. So um, that, I have to say, is an alien influence for sure. So. Um, there is a lot more to say. One thing is you have to be positive. Yes. Jim is so good in channeling because his vibration is... Uh, I know the number, his vibration is way higher than mine. Whatever happens to Jim, he is positive. Whatever happens, he asks his guide and say, all right, it's done for that purpose. I mean, anything negative that happens has a good purpose. In, many, in most cases. And sometimes it's, it's mishap, but in most cases, say, I really want that, and I go and get it, things go wrong all the way. And then later I discover that if I fo followed my desire, I would get in a big trouble. And uh, that happens all the time. Here is an example. We have a friend who had a uh, wife, Thai, Thai wife, Taiwanese or Thai, Thailand wife, or uh, girlfriend. And she cooked for him dinner. And he got a stomach ache and he was throwing up and he was miserable. And that prevented him from going to work. And that saved him because his work was in, uh, in the uh, World Center Towers and at the time when it, it, it was the day when it was blown up. So he, he, uh, his wife or girlfriend saved him from going there, give, give him a, giving him a poisoned you know, dinner or lunch. <laughs> so, so things of that sort happen all the time. So I'm aware, I, I spoke through Jim to my, one of my guides. And they mess things up badly all the time. And on intention, you know, they are the ones who are playing chess. So the guides are, you know, when people die, when, when people die, they go up there and they have the choice. Do you want to be a teacher uh, to other spirits? Do you want to become a guide? And a few other choices. And uh, if you're becoming a guide, and we know, I know someone who died and he chose to become, become a guide, uh, you know, the person gets about several guys, maybe four or so, and, you know, they are responsible, you know, for his or her uh, mishaps or luck. You know, we think that things happen by chance, but in fact, you know, they are playing the dice and they, you know, they selected <laughs> how the dice will fall up. You know, would it go this way or this way? And they also do things by, by trading with other guides. So they have like kind of a team of brokers there and they you know say if you do that okay, I will do you that for you and so your subject you know will uh, will get that luck or mishap and uh, you you help me here so there is a lot of trading going on and ask them if they uh, know the future and they say they don't they focus on this day and maybe a few days in advance sometimes they can get messages like angels who know much more of the future but again they're playing real time with knowing a few days in advance or a few hours in advance so they can help you to avoid really bad circumstances, but their goal is to give you lessons. And you pick the lessons before incarnating here, your higher self picks the life things which they need to fix. So in the past life, you were bad to that kind of people or in that kind of situations, or you weren't brave enough, or you were overly ambitious or whatever. So here you pick the theme, so you want to be with that kind of certain kind of parents and or with certain kind of job situations or other things and you get it over and over and over until you finally learn the skill to deal with that one way or another and then you kind of stop your guide stop giving you that that kind of lesson so if you get a repetitive lesson over over and over it's because you are not getting it right you need to change your attitude change your formula change your emotion change everything or belief system to get it right uh, so one part of the channeling is to become more positive to understand that you are being guided to be in touch with your guides and Jim is in touch with his guides in the way he asks he asks you know what should I do or how do I take it and he gets the answer I also get it but not as much not as often and sometimes my negativity I know blocks it and my fear and my fear of the camera blocks it as well. <laughs> so, being but, more pure and positive helps channeling. But here's, a, here's just a sample of... Um, 
I, I pray for money because I don't have a job or anything and I need the funds. But they send me other things as well. They send me a new monitor and now we're using it for this channeling. Yeah. And somebody just gave it to me and said, here, do you want this? I'm getting rid of it. And it's like the nicest monitor I've ever yeah. had. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it was for free. And people give me televisions and all kinds of things, and I don't know why they're giving me things, but the universe is taking care of all my needs, and I'm just amazed at it. They send me donations and things of that nature, and I don't even ask for them. But I do ask God to provide what I need, because I have to pay my bills. And at this point, He has done so. So, I have to say, thank you God for that, and... Um, thank you, Universe and White Light and all the good things out there, because at this point, um, they're taking care of me for helping them out. So, I really, I, it's hard for me to fathom that. So, and probably hard for my friends to fathom as well, because they're going, oh my God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how, how did you get that? <laughs> but, uh, it's just because... They want, they, they're giving it to me, so um, I have to say that. Part of that is service. It's kind of, you are in agreement, mm -hmm. you serve, and then they take care of So you have to commit. I mean, channeling is service. Jim is taking risks, and he's being guarded. It's, it's, I didn't want to do it at first, because I, it's really putting your out there, yourself out there for a lot of negative response. Because From people, humans. For, because people are like, oh, you, you're just a nutcase. Human. Yeah. Yeah, so. Speaking about financials, so um, we already received about $200 in donations. Uh, we have a website, humancolony.org. Please visit and join our website. We have lots of videos now, and every new channel in it will be on video. And the past channel in it will transcribe and post uh, audio and, and text. And they're very educational. There's a lot of information there. We accept donations on the website through, uh, through PayPal and you know, in any other possible ways you can donate. You can also donate your work in transcribing the audio and helping us and others. So the website is devoted to helping the, the contact, especially through creating of human colonies. So there is discussion and there is a meaningful discussion how the contact should proceed and the aliens are listening, they are reading and listening. Not as carefully as I, I wish, but they're still listening. Uh, other ways to help, we in the future will be happy to visit other places. We are near Toronto, we are a three hour drive from Toronto, and you understand we can fly, we can drive to give presentations elsewhere, and Jim can channel and I can uh, interpret sometimes and help, help the process, or Jim can channel, but I don't know if he can do it without me. I would think that he might be not yet used to that because you need to be guarded. You need to be in a guarded environment. I provide this a safe environment. Yes, that's true. And that is important. If there will be another one who can provide safe environment, that is good as well. But I am th see seeing that happening. There are some conferences. There are some you know, groups which I think would be would welcome Jim. You know, if there is a financial possibility to drive or to fly there, we would be happy to consider that. Right now is a good time. Uh, in the future, obviously, there would be other possibilities. Uh, Jim is open to telephone sessions. Uh, uh, he would charge. I, I think it's a good price. Would be forty dollars for half an hour on the telephone. It's not recorded. You have to. If you want to record, you have to figure out how to record it on your side. But. But I, I'm getting some people calling me and wanting me to do a Skype channel with them. Yes. I haven't done it yet, but I have some people that want to do that, and they're from all over the place. So um, it's really quite interesting, and I don't have a price set yet, so I don't. That's I, it's sort of secondary to, for, to the work, but I I do need the money, but um, I haven't set any price yet. Yeah, so, so somebody is asking, this personal channel is with ETs. Yes, uh, yes. Bashar is doing it, Brad John, Do Johnson is doing it. I don't think Bashar is doing it anymore, but he was doing it some years ago. And Brad Johnson is doing it now, and I think it makes perfect sense. I, I had a lot of personal advice from ETs, especially in business. Mm 
-hmm. It's not my business is flourishing, but you know, I ask business question like how do I communicate with this person? And they say the best way to communicate, like Ash said, to this person is by shutting up your mouth and listening. And that was very unusual advice, especially for me, but but you know that that was that made perfect sense and it went, went well. So uh, Lakesh is a good ad, good advisor in those things. Um, yeah, Lakesh seems to know people that Max knows. I he he seems to. Have, oh, he can just trace yeah, them. He, he I just, just give goes, a name and they, he he goes. He knows the he knows their personalities, and you know it's in, really amazing that he gave a bunch of advice about all these different people that Max knows and that I never met and that and he was right on with every single one of them so he was did really well <laughs> coming back to the idea of channeling obviously Bashar says anything you do can be channeling as you know you know anything you can do be, can be a meditation mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be channeling extraterrestrials to others some people channel spirits and uh, human spirits and that's I see it's a little lower vibration so most of the traditional psychics are channeling human spirits they say you know they invite the spirits and a person like the, the typical psychic work a person would sit in front of them and they say you know I have you know your relative here your grandfather or some other relative and uh, and they they pass along back and forth the messages you don't have to let the spirit inside Jim is doing trans channel. That anybody comes inside Jim and then speaks to you. Uh, psychics have that through, not you know they re retain control of the body and they just speak to the spirit and then speak to you, and that's my much safer way, way of doing that. So trans channeling is, you know, once we had some evil spirit possessing Jim and uh, so what do you do? You know, it was some uh, alien. Uh, spirit, dead spirit, and uh, he was just trapped on earth and trapped, and he just jumped into Jim's body and uh, he was cursed and he didn't want, want to speak English. So I asked them, begged them to help him to speak English, so he switched to, speak to English, but and he spoke like a genie from a, from a Persian uh, fairy tale. And he was cursed and he didn't want anything, so I thought that how can I help a, a dead spirit of an alien? And I, I uh, grabbed my musical instrument, which is a hank drum, and I played the beautiful music to him, as beautiful as I could play. And he became, nostal became nostalgic, and he said that this evoked in him uh, good memories, and he was grateful for that. It was transformational for him, and he said to Jim, cough me out. And Jim coughed him out, and he left. That was uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and some other times, some other bad aliens came and they gave Jim shocks, and Jim was in pain, and and then they made and I was angry at them said stop doing that, and they so so they made him happy and he laughed like a baby, <laughs> um, and after that uh, our alien friends said that you know these are evil aliens who wanted to extract some information from Jim and while they were doing that they kind of gave random impulses just to distract me and Jim from from noticing that uh, work and after that they put a guard on Jim so we have a, a, a Yale guard who was uh, who is now uh, making sure nobody evil comes through and if anybody is coming through who he doesn't know who Oops, that sorry. is or who, who could approve or he doesn't approve uh, he says Jim be uh, be aware it's, it's uh, so, so somebody who you shouldn't let in so uh, basically we are guarded Jim is guarded but you know I'm also helping and if anything helps you know I'm, I'm helping with my energy and Reiki and I'm sort of giving support so I'm I am sending the energy all the time to Jim and uh, to the alien who is going through uh, yeah one day there was the reptilian and actually the reptilian was fine and they sounded like a snake in a, in a cheap uh, theater performance in, in, in a school <laughs> like, but you know I guess that's how they sound I mean that reptilian was very very much like a, a real one and it's on video 
uh, what I wanted to add about channeling, somehow Jim's channeling was opened with Reiki. Yes. Uh, Benedetta, are you familiar with Reiki? You sound... I'm okay. about it yes, so Reiki is a healing energy with hands. You lay over hands and you send the energy through. And just the fact that, you know, you realize that you are a healer. Everybody is a healer. Even bad guys could be healers. Mm -hmm. And even bad guys could be a talented healers. So the fact that you realize you are a healer and you can heal yourself and others cleans you up. It be you become more purified. And that helps channeling as well. Also, again, channeling is not necessarily channeling extraterrestrials by having them to possess you. Some people are talented in that, but some other people can channel in many other ways. Bashar says, you know, by singing your channel, and by playing music your channel, by writing your channel, by painting your channel, by doing your work, you're channeling some energies. Yes, that's true. So, uh, see what, what's, uh, and again, Bashar's advice is see what's best for you and where you're attracted more, where are you attracted most. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, knowledge helps as well. So Reiki, practice Reiki, and you can be taught Reiki. You know, I, I taught myself a lot of Reiki through watching YouTube videos of and others. To and Qigong. Takura taught me some Reiki as well. So, so I got some extra trust. Just Reiki. going to Reiki Share. Reiki Share is a terrific event happening right now in Rochester and I believe around the world. People come together and share the Reiki energy to each other. I'm healing someone, you know, it's a group thing. Uh, people put like three, four people put hands on someone and give them tune up. And in Reiki, it's not that you are doing something to someone. It's you're getting a tune of health. And someone else, the patient has to match that tune. So it's uh, an, a conscious effort from the healer and from the, uh, the, the patient match each other and that gives you and hands are magic and right. the intention is important and then the, the energy goes out uh, down through and out through your hands and mixes with their energy your energy actually combines to help them heal so that's what reiki really does is combines our all our energies together to heal the patient so it's a wonderful thing and it's a very positive thing and it's intention oriented as well as many things are. So we are done for today. Uh, yeah, we'll finish the, with the Om meditation. You are welcome to join us with, with the Om meditation. Uh, our aliens, uh, alien friends support this idea of Om meditation. We just pronounce the sound Om. And intention is just to unite telepathically, unite spiritually, unite our heart energy into one sound. We kind of pronouncing this OM around the globe. So we have people from, a person from Malaysia around the globe. We have people from other parts of the world. So we kind of unite in OM meditation at the same time and send, what should we devote it to? Send healing energy to where? Well, the victims of the, uh, the islands there, the Philippines. Very good. Let's then do that for maybe three, four minutes, and okay. then we'll just turn off the... Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going on two hours and 15 minutes. Yes, very later. good. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank and let's you. do the OM. Okay.